Hi everyone, I'm Russell Leidick. You're watching the Dangerous Fishbowl channel, and this is Arboreal Embrace, which is my entry into the 2016 Aquatic Gardeners Association contest. Uh, this is indeed the original jungle jar, which you may recognize from previous videos. So this is a Pyrex glass cylinder that measures about 30 centimeters high by about 40 centimeters in diameter. Uh, unfortunately, there are no such equivalents available, used or new. This one's about 40 years old. However, as I've indicated in my other videos, there are places online where you can buy uh, cylinders that are almost as large, but still made of glass. And as I've mentioned before, I prefer glass simply because I don't like the possibility of scratching uh, acrylic. So the mechanics here are rather straightforward. There is a 90 gallon per hour power head in the back, uh, which as you can see is providing circulation. And in the absence of any other form of filtration, circulation is paramount because it circulates all of your nutrients and your gases uh, throughout the whole system so that they can be filtered and cycled appropriately. Uh, so it's so important that every couple of weeks or whenever necessary, you go back and remove all the debris from the intake of the power head so that you can maintain that strong current. Um, initially, uh, as in my case, you may find that you need, for instance, uh, white pumice filtration uh, to provide some, some safeguard against ammonia spikes uh, in, until the cycle basically establishes itself. But as you can see, in this case, the cycle is quite established. Um, so given my druthers, yes, I would rather have a, a water flow that goes tangential, that is around the circumference instead of across the diameter. But uh, 90 gallons per hour seems to be strong enough that uh, the latter configuration is acceptable in this case. Um, I don't add any carbon dioxide, I don't add any fertilizers, I, I really don't do anything except trim the plants and change the water every couple months or so. Um, and certainly initially when you have a new piece of driftwood, uh, it will tend to stain the water because of the tannins. Uh, the tannins are actually good for the fish, but they're not so great for the optics. So you, you know, you're know you going to find yourself changing the water uh, frequently at first and less frequently over time. And by the way, when I change the water, I, I do about a 50% water change. Um, if you're doing a lot more than that, you're just going to kick up a lot of detritus, particularly in a nano tank that doesn't have much filtration, which is really just not a good thing because it's going to stress out the fish and it's not going to make things any clearer. Uh, so I, I only go down 50%. I, I basically do one or two changes depending on how much work needs to be done in terms of trimming the plants. But it's fairly straightforward. Uh, the other thing that I do normally is I keep a clear acrylic disc on the top. So it has these little spacers about three millimeters tall. You can see them in some of my other videos. And those are to ensure adequate gas exchange, uh, but without allowing the fish to jump out. Uh, so that certainly is something that you would want to keep on top of this, which I've, I've of course removed so you can see what's going on. Um, now, how about the inhabitants? So there's a small school of rummy nosed tetras here. Um, there is a school of cardinal tetras. They like to kind of hang out at the bottom. There is a couple of silver tip tetras, which you may see. And uh, I actually have a few pygmy sunfish as well, which are very shy, and I'm not sure that they're going to come out for us today. As far as the plants are concerned, over at the back right, you see some spiky cryptocornies. And then sort of towards center right, you see a more broadleaf cryptocorny. And on the left of center, you'll see an Anubias nana. And then far back on the left side, you can see some dwarf vallis nere, or dwarf val as I call it. Uh, I don't know what the species name is. It might actually be a new species. I discovered it in one small stretch of river in Florida. And uh, I love this stuff because it never seems to grow more than about 35 centimeters in length. So it doesn't overtake the top of a tank the way that, say, jungle jowl, a jungle val would. Uh, but it does grow quite pro prolifically, and uh, it removes a lot of the waste products. I, I've given it to some friends in some stores, so hopefully in a few years it'll be coming to a store near you. Uh, but then, of course, we have Java moss, which is covering the driftwood. Uh, and the driftwood, by the way, is full of holes. It was, uh, you know, I guess, I guess it was a rotted piece of wood when I found it. And uh, the fish seem to love that because it can kind of hide out there. Um, the lighting system is a uh, Arod, that's A-R-O-D by IKEA. Um, it's, it's basically a floor lamp with a PAR-38 uh, Polaroid 2000-some-odd lumen uh, spotlight. Um, this is actually described at the page that's linked in the description, but it's, it's basically an LED spotlight that provides tons of light for about 11 hours a day, so I get plenty of good growth. I'm probably actually using too much illumination in that case. But uh, it's just a little beautiful piece of nature that sits in the corner and reminds me of how important it is that we preserve what's out there, what's left. Uh, I hope this has inspired you uh, to come up with your own little piece of nature. Thanks for listening.